Hello, colleagues. I want to show you two ClinChecks, one that came back from Invisalign that I think was not realistic and one with a simple modification to make it more, more predictable. And, you know, sometimes when we're doing aligner cases, we just sort of lose sight of what we already know as practitioners and try to create something on a screen that defies what's predictable and efficient. So basically, this is a case of a 15-year-old who's developing class three. I'm not going to get into the Ceph. The molar relationship is, you know, class three tendency, but you can see the lingual inclination of the lower incisors, which is our, you know, the patient's compensation being built in. Um, and we can see uh, edge to edge anterior that is tenuous at best. And we know that when we want to line up those lower incisors, as those crowns come forward, uh, we're going to tend to go uh, into a crossbite. Uh, but you might notice, though, because it, it seems incongruent that we have class one ish and we have the class three here, there's also a severe Bolton discrepancy um, to an almost three for throughout the whole arch. Uh, so that's part of what's going on. But uh, let me show you what I want to get at. So basically, if you look here, this is what came back from Invisalign. Forget the canines coming down. Even think about this as if you were going to do it with braces. But basically, that's too, to me too good to be true after alignment. And the key is the lower incisors. The lower incisors on the ClinCheck are improving in their sort of crown inclination with this extreme lingual root torque, which is challenging at best even with fix, but with aligners to try to grab these crowns that aren't super tall and narrow and kick those roots lingual is without, you know, much depth of bone there is really not in my opinion, going to play out so well. Now here, if you contrast what I have, is I have an alignment of the arch, a broadening of the arch, without any lingual root torque. Now what's the price I'm going to have to pay for that? Well, the lower, the incisal edges will not move back as much. And therefore, um, what adjustment will I make? So the adjustment I'm going to make is look at the size of these upper anterior teeth. The centrals are 8.3, 8.4. So that's where your bolt in, even the one millimeter bolt in is, is coming. So what I'll do is I will actually open space. In this plan, there's no space whatsoever, distal to the upper canines. By doing so, I am certainly not over flaring my upper incisors. They were almost upright to start. And that's going to keep them forward and allow me to line up the lower incisors without having to retract the lower incisors. And, and here's the key point. You cannot retract lower incisors and then avoid a worsening of that crown torque. Or certainly, you can't retract teeth and improve that axial inclination. Um, and, you know, we run into this when we do extraction cases where we have too much space and we try to retract the upper incisors and still maintain that torque. That's tough to do. And here on the lower incisors is even tougher. So you have to recognize in a ClinCheck what is not a realistic tooth movement and then play it out in a realistic way and then see what price you have to pay, what adjustments you have to make. In this case, the adjustment I had to make uh, was to get the upper incisors to just stay a little bit more forward because remember they're small teeth. So this more forward positioning of the upper incisors allows me to line up the lowers without having to retract them. I hope this helps.